Welcome, welcome. A very good evening to you, our dear viewers. Today is yet another day for us to talk, to share, to discuss. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Claire Buenje and I welcome you all to our family talk show. With me in the studio is an amazing couple. I will introduce them later. But for now, please be comfortable and I know you will be blessed. In our discussion today, we will, talk, we will be talking about how single life is an important thing before marriage. Yeah, the Lord bless you as we welcome our visitors or our guests in our studio today uh, is a couple shivan and uh, frank who will be discussing uh, this amazing topic today uh, shivan is a civil engineer and uh, she also serves on a, on and she also serves on a mother's union committee and mr kamwesiga is a businessman he also serves at saint stephen's tara welcome with me our guests today Hello, how are you? Uh, thank you very much, Claire, for having us. Thank you very much, Family TV, for having us. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here and also to get to share our lives with you about single life, about how the Lord has impacted our lives and how we can share our experiences. I think uh, we don't take it for granted. Thank you very much. Um, wow, thank you. Hi, everyone, viewers out there. Um, thank you, Claire. Thank you, Family TV, for inviting us. It's such an honor to be here, it's such a pleasure, and we are excited. Wow. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. And uh, of course, like I already said, our topic today is how important is the single life before marriage? Well, indeed, just uh, just like we, 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 were, we were saying, I would love us to know that this is a second, a second choice that, that is very important in life. So I pray and I ask you all to, to, to carry your pens and carry your notebooks and let's learn together. I will quickly turn to our guests and then I will ask them, how, how was your single life? How does it ring the bells? Please. Um, I go first. Anyways, yeah. so I, we've, got, we've been married for four years and a half so that means i've been single all my life <laughs> um yeah but um it, i i take sing, singleness to be a season a very very beautiful season that you know um god just gives us to kind of prepare ourselves and to do very many things so um how my single life was i i was a church girl before yeah, for the most part of it. So I really, really enjoyed my life. Um, I remember yesterday we were having a conversation with my husband and we were talking about how we enjoyed, you know, being single. Some, sometimes it becomes a burden to some people, but it is a season you should actually enjoy. So I, um, I used to serve at church. I was at All Saints Cathedral um, before getting married. I got married into St. Stephen's Chitara. So I was at All Saints, I was serving, I was serving in class, as she said, I'm a civil engineer, I was the mama class something, I was mama at, at church. So there was so many activities to do and for me it was such a good opportunity to just distract my mind and you know, keep me glued and serving God, yeah. So most of it was serving God, um, most of it also was having fun with friends. I really, really had fun with friends. I have very amazing friends. Um, uh, I, I don't think we had time to, you know, pity ourselves of we are not married or we are not dating or we are not doing what. It was a time to, you know, just bond and enjoy each other. And also pursue school, you know, there, there are seasons for everything. So during that time, there was school. There was very many other things that I had to do before getting here. So, so I think that's basically a brief of how my singlehood was yeah church school fun friends mm -hmm. family impacting family yeah, really just being busy all over the place mm. all right uh yeah pretty much my singlehood was more like the same all right i would say that uh because she said we've been married uh for four years and a half and uh 
the time when I the time when uh, singlehood to us has been uh, to me it has been quite an experience it has been a very good experience also I spent the most part clearly in church doing ministry serving but before of course before uh, of course I wasn't born again previously so I looked at the moment when I got born again I said now the Lord I need to make sure that I serve the Lord with all my strength or whatever that I have and I went on the road serving the Lord on mission by God's grace I became the youth chair at St. Stephen's Church, Church of Uganda Amen. and I preached the gospel we had mission we were going for mission we formed uh, singles with a purpose a movement that was basically meant to reach out to young people but also not just keep them there waiting on a marriage partner but also get them to actually uh, maximize and utilize their spiritual giftings so we we, we we went we went around preaching the gospel so clearly yeah I had a group of friends from church that would hold us accountable we we formed groups where we would speak about the Lord teaching people the truth to know what is truth what is true what is truth what is it to know the Lord can you can you can you actually defend the faith so we talked about so many things we went so basically it was about serving the Lord, getting to do ministry in church. We have a camp that runs every year, so I was really so busy into, uh, into, into, into uh, doing ministry and also, uh, especially in young people. Uh, of course, there were other, other things going on. Of course, I made a decision before. When I was single, I said, of course, previously I would relate and date just like any unbeliever, just for the fun, for the sake of it. But then when I got born again, I said, Lord, I must make sure, I pray, that my next relationship has to be my last. And I, I all through the way I was serving the Lord, I, I clearly, yes, on behind my head, of course, I knew time will come. I'll have to look for, God will, I'll get, I'll get a, a perfect, God will get me a perfect partner. But then, Behind, I knew that clearly this season was for me to serve the Lord, to chase after the Lord. And I know that the Lord that I chase will definitely bring someone at the right time. Amen. Wow. Thank you very much. Like you were saying, it, 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 it is like you have, you served God as single people. And like it is said, when you serve God as a single person, the Lord will pay you salary of a good family, of a good marriage. And just like I can see. So I would love to ask you how did you know that this was the right woman for my life or this was the right man for my life wow <laughs> that's a good one thank you uh how did i know that shivan was the right one for me this was the right person for me uh, like i said earlier i i focused on on the lord on serving the lord like clearly but deep down, I knew there were certain things that I wanted in a future spouse. There were some things that I had at the back of my head that these are the things that I, I wanted in a perfect, in, in, in a future spouse that I was going to spend my life with. One was that this person clearly had to know the Lord. And not just knowing the Lord, but this person must be working with the Lord, but also growing in the Lord. And I was looking out for the fruits, fruits of the Spirit, looking about things. I, I knew that someone would come. And I would tell that this person, because I would see their fruit, I know that this is the person that the Lord has meant for me. But also, uh, also clearly, I, I, I totally believed and trusted that this person coming, definitely it would have been a, as a result of prayer. So I was deep in prayer, praying for the right person to come. And I knew that this person was going to come from, drop from heaven. I knew that this person must be around, probably the engagements and the networks that I had. Uh, so when I met Shivan, uh, I remember it was over, it was over a dinner, and uh, the reason why I met her, by the way, we were doing ministry for for a group called uh, it was an organi it was a it was a church a church ministry project called Touch a Heart that was gathering uh, gathering uh, clothes for the needy. I think it was in Captura by then, so. Uh, of course, I had, as, as a ministry leader, as a youth ministry leader at, at, at Chitara, we had uh, some things that we were going to donate. So I reached out to, to, to the person who was leading this project. And by God's grace, it was Shivan right there. <laughs> so yeah, I reached out to this person who was leading the Touch a Heart project. I said, 
hey, let's 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 go and usually by the way my, my interactions are usually very casual so i didn't want an official come find me at church then you sit down i said no let's meet over dinner so you talk about touch a heart get to know it and see how we can help uh, as as a ministry so we we, we will i call her we meet, we meet i remember that day i don't know what had happened but somehow i know it rained she almost didn't make it but thank god she came and when she came we sat and clearly from my whole conversation with her we talked nothing but touch a heart but Deep down, when I met her, the first time I met her, I knew that this is the one. Because I had heard from God that whole, probably that most of that period, I was praying about these things and believing that the Lord will bring that person. When she came forth, she was the right person. She said the right things, the exact things that I was looking out for. She had them and more. And I believed that the Lord, this must be the one. And I went back, even after meeting her, I, I wasn't overwhelmed by excitement. I said, oh... I still went back and I and I consulted from the Lord. Is, is this the one? And and I got my affirmation even before I told her what the Lord had told me, what was on my heart. Deep down, I had gotten my confirmation from the Lord. Wow. So um, I will go to you, Shivan. How how did you know that this was the right man? Um. So like he said, we met. We met um, by a dinner. It was supposed to be like a working dinner of sorts. Um, of course, like every any single person, actually single people out there, you should you know um, keep your list. It is very important to know what you want in a man. Thus, pray for him or pray for whatever you want in a man. You shouldn't just be moving up and about waiting for any miracle to pass by. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the gifts God has given us to make a choice, you know. So one of the things I had, in, like I knew what I wanted in mind. Like I didn't have the entire picture, but I had an idea of what I wanted. So when we met, um, I met this person with all my flyers and all my <laughs> notebooks to talk about this and sell it. And he gives us clothes and whatever he had. And man, we just got there. I don't know what happened to the flyers. I even kept hiding them. Said, anyway, they just didn't show up. Yeah, so we talked so much. We, we, um, okay, clicked is not a word, but yeah, we really got each other. Mm, sorry. So we talked so, so much. Um, for the first time, I think in a long time, I failed to finish my food, and those who know me know food is bae. Anyway, so uh, one of the things that um, confirmed that this person, because like you shared, when we met, his side, my side, I knew, I really knew this is the man I would want to marry me. But you know, girls, we don't make the first move. So I had to really wait for him to make the move. Anyway, so um, one of the major things is that he knew God. He knew God. He loved ministry. He loved the youth. That is my heart. Young people, my heart. Um, youth ministry, that is my entire heart open wide. So we talked about our desires for ministry. And so those are like, he knew God, those are like the big, big things. So the side things, which we shouldn't ignore, is our, um, I had always really, really prayed for a tall man. <laughs> he happened to be tall. Anyway, by God's grace, even if the short one came, I would accept, but <laughs> this one was tall. And I was so grateful anyway. He was tall, he's a muchiga, banange. I don't know why I love bachiga so much, they are so passionate. Anyway, um, but I know one of the major things that clicked for me that dinner was, so I, I, I was in all sense, yeah? So I was hanging with very many friends, male friends, yeah? But I'd never seen someone genuinely speak their local language. So um, we were eating and he gets a phone call, I don't know from who, then he picks up and he switches from English to that real ruchiga. I was like, these people still exist in this day and age. And for me, because I love those local hymns, you know those local hymns? Mm. Yeah. So I had desired that my, my, my whatever, the person I spend my life with should really have, you know, that time to sing with me at home and we sing with the kids, open the hymn books and sing. Yeah, so those are some of the things and very many other things that God revealed. But um, at that dinner, I just knew, I remember I ran back, we were doing our final exams, I ran back to my hall, Mary Stewart, 
and my friends, hi to my friends who are there. I told them, guys, I've met the one. I've never seen this, but I've met the one anyway. But yeah, that, that's how I oh, can. Interesting mm-hmm. story there. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I want to thank God that uh, you, through the help of the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the help of God, you could know that this is yeah, the man true. that the Lord true. has sent to me. Mm-hmm. Wow. So uh, how important is this season we are talking about? We are saying single life, we, you know, is an important season before marriage. How important is it? Well, I think, uh, I think, I think singleness or the time, the season when you're single is one of the most important periods mm-hmm. or one mm-hmm. of the most mm-hmm. important seasons of your life. Uh, because one, it sets the foundation mm-hmm. for even how your marriage will be. Mm-hmm. So. That is a very nice season, a very, a very important season. And uh, for one, from experience, uh, one, I made a choice to make sure that this is the season in which to serve the Lord. Mm. And I went all out to serve the Lord. One, you have the luxury of time. Because uh, if, for example, today, Frank, right now, if you told, for example, Shivan, that we have a mission, for example, to cover it uh, tonight, uh, she will have to first make sure she aligns so many things. How are the kids going to, who is going to take care of the kids, who, how, is, how is Frank going to you get how, go by by the night and the next day probably. But then uh, if you told me, for example, during my single, uh, my single life, I would, uh, I, would, I, would be, I would be going home, for example, and someone calls me and says, listen, there is an overnight tonight, and the next day we are going for mission. That night I'm at overnight in at Chisugu. The next day I'm going, I'm on the bus for mission in Kavari. So clearly you you have a luxury of time, you have time to serve the Lord like never before. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those deposits that I made in my single life have mm-hmm. somehow laid ground for even my marriage life. True. So uh, one, you have a, as much time to serve the Lord than even Paul says it and says that, listen, right now in your marriage, you have more time. That's why he was saying it's better to be single because it felt like you have more time without, without the distraction of, of, of marriage because now the, and, and all these other things because now you're engaged, you have so many things, but uh, when you're single, you have more time to serve the Lord and also to devote yourself to so many things around church. Like, I believe personally, like you your most, your most important and grounded friends you'll get in your single life. Because you can heavily invest in friendships. You have, you have so much time to dedicate to building uh, relationships that actually matter, that will probably propel you to new levels in your career, in your life. But those are, those are relationships that you'll build in your single. Because when you're single, because when you're married, when you're married, it is a whole completely different thing. Probably you do not have as much time as you used to have back then. Mm-hmm. And also the fact that now you're building something together. So you need mutual friends. So there's, there's so much strings attached. And yet when you're single, you, you're, you're a bird that has been allowed to fly. You fly mm-hmm. away and, and, and pray that everything that you g- gather is, is, is important. Mm-hmm. So I personally believe that uh, the single life is the most important season mm-hmm. of your life. The most important season of your life, and and you have to fully utilize that season to serve the Lord. There mm-hmm. will be never, there will never be a better time mm-hmm. to serve the Lord, true, ex- true. A, apart from the time when you're single. So use this time to serve the Lord with all the zeal, all the energy, passionately. Let me tell you what: what you're looking for, the most of the things you're looking for, probably you'll the, the foundation will be laid in your single in your singlehood. So invest as much time. Mm-hmm in serving the Lord. Because that is the time when, for example, the th- I wasn't actually, honestly speaking, I wasn't out there looking for a mate, mm. but I was out there seeking the Lord. True. Because I felt like I have so much time. The goal wasn't that at the end of the day, I go to some, I go to an, the aisle and I say I do. My goal was that someday the Lord gets me, and for any Christian, by the way, that someday the Lord calls you and you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. That was the goal. Mm-hmm. The goal wasn't that I'm, I'm here serving the Lord, that I may get a mate, mm-hmm. that I may get, you know, like friends around church, that I may get. The goal was that I may serve the Lord zealously with all the energy that I have. 
And the, one day when the Lord calls me, marriage or not, that the Lord calls me that he will be well done, good and faithful servant. Wow. And, I, and I bless the Lord that that foundation kind of, kind of grounded even the person that I wanted in my life. When Shivan came about, definitely I was, I, was, I, was, I was so focused on the Lord, so focused on serving him that I was reading yesterday, uh, when, you, when, you, when you read from uh, for Genesis, Genesis uh, 2, and you look at Adam, Adam being planted, Adam being, being created by God to care, till the land. And then the Lord himself, the Lord himself looks at Adam and says, no, it is not good that he be alone. The Lord himself. Mm. So I believe the first thing that anyone should do, that we should do, is to serve the Lord so zealously. Mm. And the Lord himself will notice and say, no, it is not good that you do what you're doing alone. You need mm. someone suitable for you. But that is if you're, you're serving the Lord, you're, you're tilling the land, you're, you're, you're caring for the land like how Adam was doing. So it begins with you, and then after, the Lord himself will notice at that time, that the right time, the Lord will bring forth someone who will be suitable for you. But first, for me, it began with serving him, running and chasing after him, and then the Lord came through for me. And so can need for anyone, really. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Thank you very much. If you are single out there, this is a season. It is a very good, good season that the Lord has placed in your hands to serve him, to discover, to discover yourself, to love on yourself. Remember, if you can't love yourself, really, if you don't know how to love yourself, it's not possible for you to love someone else. So utilize this time. It is a time to gather all the knowledge, to gather all the, the counsel, to gather all the ingredients that will take you to the next level, which is marriage. Remember, it is is very important to spend much time sharpening an axe to cut a tree than taking much time or wasting much time cutting down the tree with a blunt axe really so anyways thank you very much mr frank well said well said and uh to you shivan what what's your take on this um so i don't know anyways um so what was the question um during how important this, how important, how important okay. is a season things so anyway um like my husband said it is such a very very precious time very very precious season i remember i was in my second year um and we were at a, a fellowship it's called sisters keeper yeah um and the speaker there you know emphasized something. He, she, she was talking about seasons and she told us to actually appreciate the seasons we are in. I think that fellowship kind of set me free because around that time, not in a bad way, but my friends were dating and people, you know, people looked like people at church were chasing them and like you're genuinely happy for them, but you're wondering, guys, I'm here. Hello. And man, second year seems like you're really old enough to be chased. And in that whole time, there was really no one. Everyone is mamaring you, mama, mama. And for me, that the speaker then just ministered to me because she emphasized the fact that if you can be satisfied in that season, if you can be satisfied in that season, or you see other people and you're happy, genuinely happy for them, then the Lord can bless you, you know. And it kind of set me free to enjoy my, my singlehood, my singleness per se. Um, one of the things I, I really focused on was um, identifying myself, like who I really am. Um, and in, in the sense that I needed to know what, what works for me, which friends do I like hanging with, what do I enjoy, you know. Sometimes you're out there looking for someone, but you actually don't know who you are. And when someone just comes by, you're willing to be swayed by. And the Bible, you know, tells us not to be equally yoked with non-believers. So it is very, very important to kind of know who you are, your identity, who I am. So for me, it was a time to kind of um, um, build my foundation in God. I know that these are my non-negotiables. I'm not going for someone who is not born again. I'm not doing this and this. I'm not compromising on this and this. So it was um, a very, very beautiful season for me to kind of establish that. So when Frank came by, I knew what I wanted and I had really enjoyed my season. I had really enjoyed my time, yeah. Wow. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. So I believe you are so encouraged and I pray that you enjoy this season. You could be out there and you're saying, really, am I cast? Why am I not getting married? I want to assure you, this season is not a curse. It's not, it's, it's not like, it's, it's a problem. It is a blessing. Enjoy it by serving the Lord. Enjoy it by discovering yourself knowing your strength knowing your weakness knowing what you love knowing everything that concerns you and i assure you the next level will be as easy as a b c thank you thank you so much for that um sharing i know people out there are very much blessed so um huh, another one another one here so I know, we all know we are in this world, but there are people out there who could be saying, you know, I'm clocking 30, or I'm clocking 40, or they are under pressure, eh? Why, why, why me? Why am I not getting married? How would you encourage someone who's going through under pressure, who's under pressure? How would you encourage them? How would you tell them that, yeah, there is time for you, for, for you, for you? So. Um, okay, so to begin with, I'll just, to that person, yeah, I know there are seasons we can go through that seem really hard, but I would want to read for you Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Um, this is the Lord telling us, yeah, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Um, Isaiah 43 talks about how when we go through the waters, we shall not drown. When we go through, you know, um, one of the characters of Jesus is the fact that he is a high priest who actually knows every single thing we go through. Yeah, we do not have a high priest who is out there ideal and, you know, doesn't know what we go through, but he has been tested in every way, you know. And even when you're 30, it, it's, the, the goal is not marriage. You know, the goal is not a husband, like um, Frank said. The goal is actually that great prize. The goal is heaven. The goal is eternal life. So um, even when it sounds cliche as such, but it is the honest truth. Just seek God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things add up, you know. Um, there are very many happy single 30-year-olds in my circles. Very many people, you know, who are 30 years old. And they're actually enjoying. And then there are very many... 28, 25, really young girls or young men who are so depressed and the only word on their lips is marriage. I want to get married. I want a wife. I want a man, you know. But actually, God wants to meet you there and minister to you. Mm -hmm. That this wife that he's going to give to you is not um, a distraction, but, you know, just someone to hold your hand and you know God better. Um, one of the things I used to tell myself when I was single was, I really knew I wanted to get a very, very good man, a man who fears God. There are men who would speak, and I'm like, mm, I, I, I would want my man to speak like that, or my man to hold himself like that. But one of the questions that, you know, kept me going were, some of the questions were, am I the person that I would want to be, you know? Am I the person that I would want that person to have? Like, am I actually the person a good man would deserve, you know? So th these are some of the questions you can ask yourself and you use this season to actually allow God to work on you. Mm. Most of the times we are single and we just want to, you know, we want to be found. But how about you work on yourself and you allow God to minister to you and to enjoy this season mm. and to build yourself and to build relationships and to minister to God rather than, you know, beating yourself up and, mm. and, and yeah. So I would just encourage you that your time is coming and it is really good. Wow, thank you very much. How Let's... can one handle that pressure? You're clocking 40, you're clocking 50, or when people, people are asking, when are you getting married? You know all those questions, and we were, we were, we were uh, discussing how can you handle that pressure. And Shivan was telling, or Shivan was, was sharing with us that it is well, the Lord has your back. Do not be discouraged, do not be dismayed. The Lord is with you. So ladies, and gentlemen, if you are a single person out there, please don't be under pressure. The Lord has your back. Uh, just to let us know that the Lord does not set his, his, his time basing on man's clock, basing on your clock. 
just know in the right time the lord will give you your man the lord will give you your woman just wait patiently upon the lord he will give you a man after his own heart he owns uh, the, the the best man the best woman be of good courage the lord will bless you with Amen. your marriage Amen. yeah i'll go straight to you mr kamwesiga do you have anything yeah uh so how important is the season mm. to to no how can one handle the pressure how can one handle the pressure uh one i would like to say that uh, the biological clock is biological and it has been created by god but uh, the creator the moment you look towards the creator and not the creation there you are going to find all your answers there the, the biological clock will keep moving it will keep moving but then the creator who created you and knows you more than anyone else he knows what is perfect for you mm -hmm. you cannot uh, he is the one who creates a manual for whatever you have and definitely when you follow the manual then you know uh, there is a there, there is so many times so many times we, we look at so many things around us we look at the time and then everyone is asking when are you getting married you're mm -hmm. clocking 30 you mm -hmm. find everywhere at church they're asking hey, when are you getting married your parents are asking hey, when are you bringing the muko mm -hmm. uh, but uh, i want to give you encouragement that you, you cannot go out looking for these people yourself the lord has his own mm -hmm. perfect time perfect. Wow. and you trust god's timing mm -hmm. that god's timing is perfect and at the right time the lord will bring someone Amen. and also to believe that the one who created you surely has good interests mm. at heart for you. Mm. And that person at the right time will come and, 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 and let me tell you, it will be beautiful, it will be worth it. Mm. So if you're there probably losing hope and being discouraged, I want, to, I want to give you hope and know that the person who created you, he's faithful. That person knows you more than anyone else yeah. and at the right point in time, he'll bring that someone who will be suitable for you and you'll enjoy it. You'll mm. enjoy it. Just keep, just, mm. just put a wall mm. Put a wall. All these things that are happening all around you. By the way, let me tell you, our standard is not mm. our standard is not the environment. Mm. Our standard is not is not is not trends on social media. Is not what's happening around you. Our standard is God Himself. Mm -hmm. So, dig into the Word. Dig into get to know. Enjoy your walk with the Lord mm. at the right time. The Lord will surprise you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God's timing is the right time. Keep waiting on the Lord and he will bless you with a beautiful marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I will ask us, please let our viewers understand this. How can one be in courtship or this so-called dating? How can they preserve themselves in the courtship, in the dating? Without sinning, without sinning, without sinning. Is it good to go through the courtship anyways? Um, thank you, Claire, once again. Um, of course, courtship is very important. This is the time you get to, you know, get to know the person. You're not going to just jump into marriage. There's no such thing as getting there when you totally know the person. But you could actually prepare and, and get to know this person's interests and spend time together and really connect and get to know each other. Um, so courtship is really important. Um, the first question you asked is keeping pure mm -hmm. in, the, in the courtship. Uh, oh, sin. So I don't think there is such a thing as not sinning. So of course we sin every day, or um, willingly or not. But maybe we can talk about purity. One of the things we talked about before we got into our courtship was the fact that we desired to, you know, be pure. Um, at first, it came off as the one as me, Shivan. I, I came off like I was the pure of purest. Anyway, I wanted to really be pure and I had to tell him my intentions. I don't want to do this and this. And he just laughed at me. So when he laughed at me, I'm like, okay, maybe, I don't know. If you dare, I will leave you. Anyway, that was my mindset. And, you know, we start dating, um, phone calls and things like that. Going out, we actually went out almost every day to eat, to drink, to, yeah, we really, really had fun to talk, to walk. And this person never hugged me until like the fifth month of our of our dating i remember asking some of my friends do you think this person really is attracted to me but um 
it, it is something to show of how committed he was to walk this journey of purity. So we really tried by God's grace. And um, I can proudly say we had our first kiss at our wedding. It was not easy. It mm -hmm. took very intentional measures, meet in public places, no visiting each other in private places. No, like there were really strict rules that we kept ourselves accountable and, and we really tried to, because he, he was a youth leader, I was a leader. So we wanted, you know, at the end of the journey, I don't destroy his journey. He doesn't destroy mine. So we really kept each other accountable and we had those checks of how are you, how is it? And, you know, we had those really deep talks of man, the feelings are in and, you know, but yeah, hold it, hold it right there. So I really thank God. It's really worth it. It's worth it. And, you know, after everything, you keep wondering why do people actually go ahead and, you know, mm. uh, however, it's not, it's not an easy journey, but it's doable by the grace of God and the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I would say that uh, one is uh, set boundaries. Mm. We went out to set boundaries and know, uh, for example, our meetings, what time do we meet, mm. when do we meet, mm. Uh, what do we say? What do we what do we talk about when we meet? Yeah. Uh, we only dated, I think, for eight months, uh, and that's a shocker for some. But uh, clearly, it was not about the quantity of time, but it was about the quality of time. So whenever we met, it was we were talking about how 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 we are going to grow as as a couple, defining the boundaries, because at the end of the day, it takes two to tango. So we we believe together that uh, if we started this journey together, then we are going to believe that the reason as to why the Lord has brought us together is for the glory of his name. And if it is for the glory of his name, probably God is going to use us to be the light and salt mm -hmm. of, the, of, of so many relationships that are going on around us. And uh, I want to bless the Lord so much. I don't think it was any of our power or will. It was only by the grace of God. And this is not to tell this is just to tell someone out there that it can also happen for you. Like it is possible and it is doable. One of the things also that one of the things probably that we also that helped us also was uh, was 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 having friends that hold us accountable. Mm -hmm. We had so many people that would hold us accountable because we would share with them. We had mentors, people would look look up to us and ask us the hard questions. So I think it helped us in our journey and uh, we bless the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you very much. Well said, well said. Please don't be single and seen. Wait in the Lord. Uh, make yourself busy, like they were saying, but don't sin. Don't sin. Amen. Of course, it takes the grace, like she said. It isn't easy, but it takes the grace of the Lord. Yeah, and I, I think I'll ask this will be the very last question because our time is fast spent. I know people out there are saying, no, we still need more. Yeah, but our time is fast spent, and this is my last question to you. Uh, I, uh, uh, what is your encouragement to someone that has gone through very, very many heartbreaks, has gone through relationships that were toxic, and they are feeling like, I am giving up on love, not anymore, not anymore. I have gone through uh, a hostile uh, relationship. What's your encouragement to them? What's, what, what, do you, what do you say to them? Um, the very thing that comes to mind, the Lord is really close to the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. I think Psalm 34. Um, you know, th the word of God is power. The word of God is truth. The word of God is God himself. Even when you go through whatever valley, the valleyest of valleys, even when you go through the darkest of, of shadows and valleys, um, the Lord is with you. And um, I, I would advise you to, you know, just take off time. If you've been through very many heartbreaks, take off time, breathe, and allow God to minister to you. I wouldn't encourage you to just snap. Now, no, just take off time. Yeah, um, you could, could go to the wilderness like Jesus did. Just give yourself time, a break, and you actually discover and breathe and, and, and allow God to minister to you. And yeah, engage in friendships that are encouraging, in, in activities that are encouraging, that you know you don't have to lose yourself or, uh, or give up on marriage, yeah, or give up on relating, because these are beautiful things that the Lord has, you know, 
set aside for his glory. And what the devil does is steal them, steal these opportunities, steal these platforms, steal everything that the Lord has intended for good so that you lose out. So the loss is ours. But if you're going through that, you can take a break. Take a break from everything and breathe. And yeah, God is really close to you. Amen. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so please don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord is with you. The Lord loves you. He knows you. So please don't give up. Quitters never win. Please don't give up. And uh, of course, please share your, your last remarks to our viewers. And then one of you will pray for us. And then we call it a day or a show. All right. Thank you very much. Uh... Claire, thank you very much, Family TV, for having us. Yeah. And uh, it's been such a pleasure to share and open our lives to so many people out there. Yeah. And I want to also encourage you, friends that are watching today, that um, if you take if you f take care of this horizontal relationship between mm -hmm. you and God, but God will align your vertical relationship. Mm -hmm. That once you commit to walk this journey with the Lord, mm. get to know Him, get, get, get to walk with Him, mm. understand, read His Word. Once you develop that relationship, somehow He aligns your vertical relationship mm. with, with, with the person that you need, with your friends, and all these other people that are around you. So I trust that the Lord will, will continue to move and align you perfectly. That met yeah. one time. Yeah. Amen. 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 Please pray for us. Father, we thank you, King of Glory. Thank you for such an opportunity, King of Glory, to speak your word. Thank you for King of Glory sharing and sitting with us, O oh God. So, Father, King of Glory, we pray that, Father, today that you minister to someone out there who is who's yearning, King of Glory, who is struggling and has questions in, in their singlehood, or oh King of Glory, we pray that, Father, you may teach him that he is complete in you, and in you he may find all that he needs, O oh King of Glory. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that Father, you may help him, O oh God, focus on the purpose as to why he's born. And Father, King of Glory, we know that that day will come. And you'll bless him with the loved one, O oh King of Glory. And surround all of us, O oh King of Glory, with such relationships, O oh God. We love you. We thank you. This is mighty name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you very much, our dear guests. And to our viewers, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for keeping it Family Talk Show. The Lord bless you. And the Lord amen you and if you're single out there you are blessed don't you worry the Lord has your back and your best man your best woman is coming your way the Lord bless you and from me and the Kamwe in the studio it is a bye-bye and God bless you <laughs>